Yo, it's Lynn John, my name is Cock Horror 34. I'm here today to do another episode of Prehistoric Subject Files, and today I'm going to do something different. Um, instead of going through every species of this genus, which is Panthera, um, I'm going to go through the prehistoric species of Panthera. So today we're going to go through the prehistoric species and subspecies of Panthera. So the first species we're going to tackle um, is Tigris, and we're going to go for the su uh, extinct subspecies of this one, of this uh, particular genus, which is the tiger. I mean, not genus, species, which is tiger. And the first one we're going to go through is Panthera tigris actidens, um, which is also known as Wasen uh, tiger. And this is actually, this picture you can actually see here is actually an, an Amur tiger that has uh, traits that make it look like uh, a Wasen tiger. Now the Wasen tiger is the earliest known uh, subspecies of Panthera tigris. It lived on the islands of Indonesia and also lived in Asia. It lived from the late Pliocene to the middle Pleistocene era from 2 million years to 500,000 years ago. It was uh, 2.3 meters long, 1.2 meters tall, weighed in around 440 to 770 uh, pounds and was driven to extinction by another tiger spe uh, subspecies known as uh, the Trinil tiger or Panthera tigris trinilensis. Uh, um, which was actually driven to extinction by the South China tiger, also known as Panthera tigris amoyensis. So, yeah, there was kind of a bit of a knock-on chain with this tiger. It, it, it became extinct because of the Trillin tiger, uh, the Trin Trinil tiger, yeah, which was then driven to extinction by the South China tiger. So it seems like these subspecies were in a bit of a, a competition kind of setting um, in their species which is really interesting i've never actually seen that before subspecies actually driving each other to extinction which shows that maybe uh populate the certain populations of tigers uh actually were better um as they grew older but i mean grew older genetically and you know were, were became more widespread so it seems like that geographically this tiger was really widespread and then subsequently may have been uh, driven to extinction by its uh daughter spe uh, subspecies its basically descendant subspecies or maybe uh subspecies from a different line of the tigerus uh, species so yeah that's pretty interesting to see that happen in uh, tigris and on to the next subspecies of tigris which is the uh, tiger species known as Panthera tigris trinilensis or the trinil tiger uh, which lived around 1.2 million years ago and possibly became ar extinct around 50,000 years ago uh, it lived in Trinil uh, Java Indonesia its fossils have been stored in the Dubai uh, Dubaios collection National uh, Museum of History uh, in Leiden, I think, Leiden, the Netherlands, um, and possibly it's the direct ancestor to, uh, well, no, sorry, it's probably not the direct ancestor to the Javan tiger, even though it lived in Java, and obviously, as I said before, it was driven to extinction by the South China tiger, so it, it, this, go, this one, again, had some uh, geographic range, and as you can see, it's distinct from the coloration on the fur, um, around the head, and also on the shoulders, which is strange, I've never actually seen that in tigers before, you know, tigers losing their stripes, but this is probably just because it's a genetic variant, because that's all the subspecies is, it's a genetic variant of that particular species, Species. But obviously subspecies occur when certain populations of that species are cut off from each other and begin to show differences in their genetics. So probably this is why um, this actually you know, came about because it was cut off from other tiger uh, subspecies and then just started to have a genetic um, fault or basically mutation where it lost its stripes pretty much. Up next is the subspecies known as Panthera tigris. Solensis, which is also known as the Gandong tiger. Uh, this lived in, Sundal in the Sunderland region of Indonesia. It lived in the Pleistocene era, and it's only known from seven uh, specimens. Um, and they're around the same size as the Bengal tiger. Uh, some uh, specimens point it to being larger. Uh, the largest males may have been up to around 1,040 pounds, uh, though average males are around 811 pounds. Females could be at least 350 pa uh, 315 pounds. Uh, on average, they could grow from 1.2 to 7. Point, uh, I mean, 1.72 to 3.5 meters long though I, I think these estimates may be a bit inaccurate um uh, it lived alongside stegodon trogon uh elephus hysurdrindicus uh bullophus bullolus yeah bulbolus 
uh, Paleo Kurabu, uh, Boas, uh, Bos, uh, Bos Paleo Sondricus, Tapirus Indricus, and uh, Rhinoceros Syringicus, and Homo Rectus. So, yeah, a lot of weird words there. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, this obviously, um, it's even, even though it's well known, um, I'm a bit skeptical on the sizes because it, it doesn't seem like the, it's, it's that big. Maybe it is, maybe it's the top predator of where it lived, so yeah, I could be wrong, but this is another interesting um, subspecies of tiger that isn't around today, Sh uh, a shame, you know, it's a shame to lose it, pretty much. Now, moving on, we're going to go on to the uh, species known as Panther Leo, and this is Panther Leo Sinhalius, uh, which is also known as the Sri Lanka, or... Um, Salian? Salian tiger, that's it. Um, which became extinct around 30,000 years before Christ, which I think is around 39,000 uh, years ago. Uh, it's only known from two teeth that are found in the deposits at uh, Croata. It was named in 1939, and it's known from its uh, being more narrow and more elongated than other uh, lion subspecies, pretty much. So this is definitely uh, an unknown... Well, a very... Not really well known uh, subspecies of tiger. It might, I mean, not tiger, lion. Uh, so maybe um, it's it might not even be a lion because if you only know it from two teeth, you don't you don't know much about it. I mean, you can obviously tell it, it's a lion from the teeth if you can, but I'm not so sure about this one. So, but it's still interesting to know that lions obviously they obviously uh, they also had a w wide range and that's pretty good. But um, I'm a bit skeptical on this one as well. Up next is, in my opinion, one of the coolest Panthera uh, Leo subspecies, or it potentially could be its own species. Uh, this is Panthera Leo Atrox, or Panthera Atrox, also known as the American Lion, the North American Lion, Nigeli's Giant uh, Jaguar, or the American Cave Lion. It lived from 34,000 to 11,000 years ago, and was part of the, and it was in the sister lineage to the Eurasian Cave Lion. Um, it's larger than European Cave Lion species, sat or subspecies, uh, is originally classed in Panther tigris because it shared morphological features that was similar to Panther tigris. Um, it has been partly accepted as a Panther species, um, as Panther atrox, and may have actually arisen from a Panther leo subspecies, um, or possibly even evolved from the K uh, from the European or Eurasian uh, cave lion population, which is either known as Panther leo stila or Pan or Panthera slithvilla, pretty much, uh, but it was actually isolated in the southern regions of the north of North America due to an ice sheet. Uh, it does show actually to have some convergent characteristics evolved, uh, which are found also in Panthera onca, which is uh, I think is a leopard or a jaguar. Can't exactly remember. We'll get onto that later. Um, it's around 1.6 to 2.5 meters long, 1.2 meters tall, weighed in around 774 to 930 pounds uh, and up to 100 specimens have been known from the La Brea tar pits. Earliest forms of this uh, particular species of subs or subspecies are known from Alaska. Uh, then they spread through into Alberta, Maryland and Mexico. Uh, after the Sangomanian uh, stage, uh, they, then they've been found more west and they also prefer colder climates as well as they like dwelling in caves. Uh, it lived alongside Smilodon fatalis, Canis dirus, deer species, horse species, camel species, tapir species, bisons, mammoths, bears, and other fauna as well. Um, it's known to have probably been killed off due to the loss of prey and possibly preying by humans because there's been evidence for that. And overall, I think it's really it was I think overall it was a really successful uh, species or subspecies. I'm. I think I'm more for it being a subspecies, uh, purely because uh, DNA sequencing shows that it's closer to lions, but it might be even an offshoot of lions. It might be just a species that's so closely related to, uh, to lions and so morphologically similar that it didn't have much time to distinguish itself from lions evolutionary, because that's what happens with species generally. Like, maybe you might find the first triceratops, and it might look very, very much like uh, the ancestors of triceratops, so it's pretty much like that. Up next we have Panthera leo svela, um, or also known as Panthera spella. Um, I keep saying svela, svela, it's not spella, um, or spelle, sorry, spelle, uh, which is also known as the Eurasian cave lion. It lived in Europe, Alaska, Russia, and Canada from the middle Pleistocene 
to the early Homo, uh, Holocene, which uh, was ranging from 130, uh, I mean, 133 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago to 10,000 years ago. So that's how long it lived. Um, it lived through Europe uh, around a time of 37,000 to 10,000 years ago and possibly became extinct due to receding uh, glaciers. It was around 1.2 meters tall and 2.1 meters long around and would have been around 700 to 800 pounds. Had dense fur similar to that of uh, America, uh, the African lion, though lighter in color. And possibly is known, it's pretty much possibly its own species. I think this may be its own species or maybe it's just as another subspecies. But it's been considered to be actually close to panther tigris uh, i think in morphology um, and also it's more but it's more closely related to obviously the lion uh, modern day lion um, it formed from the beringian cave lion population which is pre which was classified as panther leo versical sikaingeni i think that's how you pronounce it i'm sorry which is actually a synonym of panther leo uh, spellier um then it split from Panther Leo around 1.9 million years ago and differs from Panther Leo Atrox or Panther Atrox by being small and having different skull proportions. Two cubs of this were actually found in Siberia in October of 2015 and were actually dated to around 10,000 years ago, so they were on the last legs pretty much. Uh, Panther Leo Spellier, uh, Spe Spellier? Yes, yeah, Spellier. <laughs> Spellier possibly evolved from Panther Leo Fossilisis. Or, and also may have actually given rise to obviously panther atrox, like I said before, uh, from being cut off uh, due to ice sheets in North America because they would have spread to North America. Um, it lived alongside deer species, horses, bisons, mammoths, um, and even it's been found to actually hunt cave bears. So it actually have actually might have hunted down cave bears, but from evidence of uh, caves where they found articulated lions, uh, they actually found out that these lions were actually killed by uh, cave bears. So it's a shame to see that this animal, even though it was it was opportunistic, it obviously couldn't take on a bear. I mean, a lion versus a bear, who's going to win there? I mean, the bear is going to obviously win. But if you obviously put a pride of, <laughs> pride of lions against a bear, then yeah, the bear's not going to have a chance. <laughs> Up next is Panther Leo fossilisis, or Panther fossilisis. Um, it lived from the early, well, lived from the early Middle Pleistocene, and that's where it gets its other uh, name, uh, the early Pleistocene, uh, early Middle Pleistocene European cave line, which is just just too long. Uh, yeah, so it lived from the Middle Pleistocene era, uh, once considered to be um, Panther Leo fossilisis, and maybe actually Panther uh, fossilisis. Uh, it was around 2.4 meters tall, uh, 0 0.5 meters longer than a African lion, and probably as big as an American lion, and found to live alongside Homo heidenbergensis. Um, a 1.75 million year old uh, lion jaw may actually push the date back for this species, and it, because it may belong to this particular species or subspecies, because it is very morphologically similar. So yeah, there's still dating prob problems on this one, uh, and maybe uh, this actually might have lived older than previously thought. Okay, next up is Panthronca gom... Gomas zogiensis, yeah, obviously I'm, I'm struggling with this, or it's also known as Panthera gomas zogiensis, uh, also known as the European jaguar. Uh, this lived around 1.5 million years ago and is the earliest known uh, Panthera sea species or subspecies that's originated from, well, basically from Europe, so it's the earliest known from Europe. Uh, it lived in Italy, uh, where its first rem remains were found, also, um, which actually are classified as Panthera Toscana, which may be the same as this species. Um, it's also been found in Britain, Germany, Spain, France, and the Netherlands, and is actually larger than the South American jaguars. Um, this is around. It's around one, uh, 154 to 463 pounds. It's similar to. Similar uh, panther specimens have been found in Africa, some uh, dating to around the early Pleistocene, and have lion-like and tiger-like features, which may be similar to this, or may be ancestors to this, but we'll have to see later. Uh, it lived in forested areas and actually may have been uh, solitary. Up next is Panthera Onca Augusta, which is also known as the Pleistocene North American 
jaguar. It lived around 1.8 million years ago to 11,000 years ago and lived in both South and North America, surprisingly. Uh, was around 210 pounds in weight and was from Chile, Brazil, Washington and Tennessee. So that's a bit weird, uh, but I'll get on to that when we talk about the next subspecies of uh, this particular jaguar species, uh, subspecies or group. Up next is Panthera onca mesembrian, uh, mesembrina, uh, which is also known as the Pleistocene South American jaguar, which lived f around the same time as the Pleistocene North American jaguar. Uh, this lived both in South and North America, strangely, was up to 280 pounds in weight and was found in Chile, Brazil and Washington. So apparently these two subspecies actually shared the same environments, which is weird. So I... Maybe they are actually the same subspecies or maybe the same species because some sometimes they, they get classified as species. But it's weird how they live in the same environment and they don't like breed um, like in, and they don't like interbreed. So either something weird is going on here or they're just same subspecies or species in my opinion. Up next is Panthera paradus uh, Spellia or the European Ice Age Leopard, or the late Pleistocene Ice Age Leopard, uh, which lived from 24,000 to 11,700 years ago. It was from Europe and actually clinged on uh, later on in its existence in southeastern areas of Europe until its extinction. It was around the same size and had say, pretty much very, very similar characteristics to the Persian Leopard, also known as Persi uh, Panthera Parad uh, Paradus Oh, sorry, Pardus, uh, pa Panthropardus, uh, Cisco, Cisco, I can't pronounce that, <laughs> I'll just call it Persian Leopard. Uh, female remains uh, are sometimes confused for large male lynxes, uh, and also this particular subspecies shows some strong sexual dimorphism between uh, the sexes, because males are generally larger than the females. Um, Panthropardus antiqua, uh, actually evolved into Panthera pardus speller and is and it prefers smaller caves uh, and was actually found to be rare in large caves. Uh, this particular subspecies actually hunted uh, ibex, deer and a wild boar. Up next we have what I think is the oldest um, species of Panthera, uh, Panthera Blythe, I think that's how you pronounce it, Blythe, uh, which lived around 5.95 to 4.1 million years ago uh, during the late Messi Messian uh, to the early Zan Clean Age, uh, ages pretty much. Uh, it was found, it's from the Tibetan uh, Plateau and may be similar in size to the Clouded Leopard or Neothelis uh, nublorus, nublos, nublolus, I can't pronounce that, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, and it was around 1.8, uh, 1.08, sorry, 1.80 meters tall, and possibly weighed in at around 51 pounds. Uh, so it's quite small for what it is actually. And I believe a couple of specimens of this were actually found. And the skull you're seeing here is based on the most complete skull. But yeah, this is the oldest species of panthera. Up next is another panthera species, but this one I have very little on, like literally two words. Uh, this is panthera com. Basso, uh, which is a primitive species, so may have been closely related to Panthera uh, blithiae, so I, I don't know, there's not much information on this particular species at all. Up next is the species known as Panthera crassidens, and that lived from the late Pliocene to the early Pleistocene in Africa. May have been very much like a uh, leopard, uh, though few, few remains are actually found, and it's possibly not even Panthera, so there's still work needed to be on that, and whether it actually is Panthera. Up next we have Panthera paleocinensis, which lived in the Pleistocene uh, from yeah, well, it's from uh, northern China, and it's a basal member of Panthera. It was described in 1924 as Felis uh, Paneo. Yeah, Paneo sinensis, uh, and looked very much like a leopard, but with a short, strong snout. Up next is the next species, known as Panthera uh, scruderi. Scruderi, I think that's how you pronounce it. Scrud scruderi, scruderi, uh, which lived in Europe during the late Pliocene to early Pleistocene era, and may have actually been the same as Panthera gombasiens. Zagensis. Uh, so actually this may be just a, a specimen of that particular species, but uh, we, we won't know until we actually do further characteristics uh, measurements on it or any comparisons pretty much. 
Up next is Panthera Toscana, also known as the Tuscany Lion or the Tuscany Jaguar. Um, it's from Italy and actually uh, maybe an early form of Panthera Gomazagensis, uh, so basically uh, that particular leopard uh, species or subspecies. So yeah, there's a lot of um, variation within that particular species or subspecies if this actually is classed as that. So uh, yeah, it just shows that uh, obviously these subspecies were actually diversifying genetically and geographically. Up next is Panthera Yungai, which lived from 350,000 years ago. Uh, it's from northeastern China and Japan, and actually may be a subspecies of uh, Panthera leo or lion. Up next is Panthera, uh, Panthera Zidansky, or the Long Dan Lion, which lived from uh, 2.55 to 2.16 million years ago from northwestern China, and it was originally referred to Panthera. Paleosinensis, it's actually closely related to Panthera tigris and actually may be its ancestor. Uh, so, alright guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about Panthera and the prehistoric subspecies and species. So, I hope you to catch you later on. So, see you later. Ta-ra, goodbye.